Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to start doing some dracon draconium power or draconic power. So let's get started. So I have some recipes prepared. In fact I've done a lot of preparation in between episodes. In fact what I've done is I've been preparing flux points because the uh, pipes transfer rate just won't cut it for draconium, uh, draconic power. So we've got one energy core. This is the basic of the basis of a power, basically a power storage area. And for that, we also need these. So we need four, actually eight energy pylons. We need eight energy pylons, which will transfer power between um, the, the core and, uh, yeah, basically transfer power between the core. And then here we've got some blocks that we require. So we need actually 90 blocks of draconian blocks. I'm going to make a tier five. We need 80 blocks of redstone and we need uh, energy core stabilizers. In fact, we need a lot more than those because this is tier five and at tier five you go to advanced. And for that, let's get out. And for, actually got to, I've already got that prepared as well. Let's just do that. Let's have a look in here. I, th I think it's this one I've got them prepared in. No, not this one. Maybe it's in the other one here. Yeah. Yes, I've got another 32. So we will need 36 of these energy core stabilizers. The recipe for those, by the way, was four diamonds on a particle generator, and which is one draconium core plus four blades, plus four blocks of redstone. So you need a lot of redstone in order to build this, and a lot of draconium. The idea, and I've actually also prepared a platform. So let's go and go to the platform, which is over here. I was thinking it's night time as it happens. Oh yes, I've taken I've taken my um, shield off because. Because I didn't want to discharge things. Now, now here's a trick for you. This is a potentiometer from Draconian Evolution, and with an empty hand, what you can do with this is you can set the set the rate. So, for example, at the moment it says power seven. So if you shift, right click it. Oops, the wrong one. I have got to have an empty hand. I said before, didn't I? And that was not an empty hand. This is the empty hand here. <laughs> and shift, right click it, and that will decrease it by one. So that'll go to six. And then we'll do it, actually we'll do it to five. I think five's a good number. So what we'll do is we'll, at zero, we shall start to build up the, the this power, this draconic core, core here. So that's basically there. I'm going to remove this one. This one is where I'm going to put the reactor. So I've done the same thing. Just put redstone down and you can see this is then going to be eight blocks. Uh, this is power six, no power five. So you're going to have, these are going to be five, four, three, two, one. So this is going to be 11 by 11. That's right. So we're starting here. So we could actually count this as 5, 6. So that's an easy trick how to get things up to distances. So we need to build up from here a little bit. Um, building blocks. I've got some of these stone bricks. We'll use the stone bricks. In fact, I might as well put my chest plate back into the reason I've not been using my chest plate is because I, I was making some um, capacitors and when I was making the capacitors or from cubes, energy cubes, from, they were charging up all the time so I turned it off. Oops, I've actually got my jetpack on, I don't need them both. So let's have a look. turn the jetpack off. Right, good. So we can build up from here. Let's go up about five blocks. I think five blocks is the reasonable distance. And then on the fifth block here, let's remove this one. Let's put on here the stabilizer. I'm going to just do it so you know how it, what, what it says afterwards. I'm only going to put one stabilizer down, stabilizer down, and then I'm going to come across here to the one that says zero. And again, I'm going to build up four block four blocks this time because I forgot that you got one at the bottom. Is that right? Yes, I think that's right. Let's just check it. Yeah, that looks good. So actually, I said, yes, we've got one at the bottom and this is on the fifth block. So two, three. I've got a lot, very long range, as you can see here, like this. And the last one over here. Like that. Then I'll come down here and I'll just break these blocks. I'd have preferred to use something else, actually, than this, because I think... Oh, no, it's fine. Sometimes adjacent blocks will pick up the, the blocks underneath here, which is not what I wanted to do. So those are the stabilizers. So in the middle, we're going to put the core. If I can, 
I will get rid of this thing actually I don't need it anymore so we'll put down one drop of redstone here and then we can count up another three blocks and that's where the core is going to go energy core so we'll just put this down like that and then come down and break these blocks up So there we have that. I'll remove this one. Didn't mean to put. Whoops, a bit too aggressive in that case. But this again. Oh, dreadful. There's actually only a very fine touch on this one. So then you can come along here and you can say to it, you've got a tear down. Or you've got a building guide inactive. So you can actually put a building guide on here. It actually says it's valid, and it says this is valid and the stabilizers are valid. But that's a tier one. Uh, what you could also do is then tear up. And the next one is core is invalid. So building guide active. Let's have a look. All layers. Does it tell me? I hope it does something more than this because I haven't actually played with this, to be honest with you. That's layer zero. Layer one. I don't think this is doing what I would have expected it to do. Anyway, what you can do is you can click assemble core like that. And then it puts immediately down the it puts immediately draconic blocks down so well that's a tier two let's just get rid of these because we want to get this to tier five like that so we'll go straight up to tier five like this you'll see that five so now it says stabilizers are invalid advanced stabilizer stabilizer required and core is invalid so let's just build up the core first of all assemble core let's get out of the way Okay, if you right-click this now, it'll tell you that the cause, actually cause valid, good. So what we then have to do is make these two advanced. And what you do to make them advanced, you make them as a nine. Oops, shift click it onto place like this. Uh, you need basically a nine block here. I wonder, I wonder if I can use the uh, infinity wand on this one. Let's just have a look. Yes, we can, good. <laughs> Message core not found okay let's shift to click you have to shift click it up here that's oh yes my fuel's gone down <laughs> so i can't fly anymore so, so we'll use a jetpack instead in fact we'll stand on the core it's easiest and we'll shift click these into place so that becomes a, an advanced stabilizer that's what it looks like we'll do the same on this one here um in fact it's probably easier to put them up. Put them on the sides first. We could do the, the top layer from here easily enough and the middle layer. We just have to go down to do the bottom layer from the other side. Like that. And I'll do this the other two here. Oops. I should turn off my jetpack, shouldn't I do that? Because otherwise you you're fighting all the time. So let's do these at the sides. Okay, and the last one's over here. I'm using, as you may have noticed, I'm actually using the one the whole time for doing this. It's, it's just easier. Right, those are done. Let's come down underneath here now. So that's one done. That one's done. And then this one's done. And now we just look at this, right click it with an empty hand, and you'll see that everything is uh, stable. So you can then activate this. And now it looks like this. Now to get power into this, we need these. Let's just remove the redstone from here. I'll remove this one redstone block, and then I'll just pick up the rest like that. Um, so we need these things. Where are they gone to? I also need some glass, and I didn't bring any glass. So we've got these energy pylons. And what you do with these, you put these into groups of, I think four is a good, I believe it's four is a good number. And by default, these are inputting energy into the core. Let's come over here a bit further. Where do we want to put these ones? Actually, to be honest with you, I don't know. Let's count them up. There. So the reason I'm doing it like this is because we're going to use flux in networks to do the outside. So if you shift right-click these, or right-click them, shift right-click them. No, it doesn't work until you put the glass on them. 
Let's, I'll just go back and get some glass. Let's, well, I've actually set up a little teleportation thing here, so I don't need to get on the other, and the other side of that is over here like this. So we just need eight blocks of glass. I don't know where I've got any. Maybe we have to craft some. Fortunately, the order here is a bit strange. I think I want to set it to a set. No, I want it ascending, but it's in um, last modified. Let's do it by name. So we should be able to see glass in here. Oh, yes, we've got 10. That'll do fine. Let's take those out. Try again. I only need eight. Let's put two away. Let's go back. And then we can just put this ordinary glass on the top, and then it transforms, transforms into these sort of spheres. I knew it, didn't it? Okay. So we'll have this one as going into the court, and this one will go up into the outer. Of course, if you if you shift right click, if you right click this now, it shows you the particles, which direction they where they're going to. So if you shift right click it. I want it to go right. Or maybe I have to shift right click the ball. Oh, yes, I do. So if I do the ball, you'll see that these arrows are going out. So these are now going out of the core. Like that. Like that. So if we right click these now, it doesn't tell us much. You'll see that particles are flying in from here into this energy core. You can click right click the energy core. It's got a capacity of 59, uh, or almost 60 giga stuff no transfer coming in or out the next one's just more blocks of whatever so what we need to do now is to put uh, some form of energy into these things here like this if i right click this now right click that one i right click the block and it shows you the direction i didn't do that last time yes it's, but it doesn't tell you which way it's going but you can see by the sphere here they, they are going out towards the center, as you can see. And these ones are going from the center outwards. There's a little sort of halo effect around the around these spheres. You can see that. So that tells you the direction. Anyway, if you didn't know otherwise. So the next thing we need to do is to give this power. Um, and the way, the obvious, the obvious way to do that is using flux networks. So let's go back home and build a flux network. I haven't done this, but, but I have actually completed the, the quests for that. So let's go along here and have a look at the quest. In fact, I've programmed quest to Alt and Q. So mystical agriculture, I did an Enderman seed and got rid of that one. Now flux networks, there isn't that much in flux networks to actually do. There's just this flux dust. And the recipe for doing flux dust, it was this one here. In fact, I've set up a recipe to, pro to do this. And I'll show you that in a second, as long as we've got enough time, that is. Um, so I'll claim this reward and you get some flux dust for this one, uh, which is actually handy because that's what you actually do need. And then you've got flux points, which are removing energy. So this takes energy out of here and that will give us some flux points. Flux core, give us a flux core, okay. Yes, those are also very handy for what the stuff's going on. Oops, I pressed Q to so let me put that back up again. And the next one here is the flux plug, which puts power into the network. And we get some more flux cores. Very handy again, actually. They're handy for this. These are sensible rewards for this type of stuff. And here we get oh, a flux configurator. So I've collected that reward. And this is to make the flux controller. So this is the brains of the net. Networks do not require a flux controller to operate. OK. I didn't know that. Anyway, I made one because it's part of the stuff to do. And this one is flux storage. We've got some of these rewards that actually happens. Um, and I actually have made a gargantium one. So that these are the different items you can make. But, which is odd because you, you have to make the bottom one in order to get to the gargantium one. I didn't collect that reward today. And that gives us some flux blocks. Uh, flux blocks, by the way, are the recipe for these are these flux cores plus these flux stuff. So everything you've got has actually enabled you to get some more stuff of what you need. So there we are. Let's go down and put this down somewhere. I'm just thinking of a good place. Oh, no, let's do it up there because it's probably a good place to do it. There's plenty of space here, as you can see. I've put quite a lot of space. 
So for example, now we can da put down the controller. Uh, maybe we can just put down some gargantium storage like this. And maybe on top of that, let's just put this ender gate here. This will be a way, I think I can put it on here. Maybe not. Okay, I can't. But then we could put in onto this uh, a flux plug like this. It doesn't have any color. This, these are all because we haven't got a network. So we'll create a network and we'll also put a flux point onto this. So this becomes some sort of storage as well. I think, you know, I'm not even sure if you need to do that. So well, let's create a new network. It always defaults to you, to your username. Let's just change this. Uh, and let's put it as my name network like that. And then you can color it. So you've got different colors and those actually show up. So let's like select light blue, for example, and create this. It's not, I don't want it encrypted because I'm the only player here. What's wrong with this? Private, public, in fact, public's fine. Then I'm the only player in here. So this is the network ID. And then it's got network points here. Network, I've got to select host, of course, I've got to select a network, haven't I? Please select a network, that one. Okay, so that's now highlighted. And as you can see, it's got, it's now in light blue. Network connections, it's just got one gargantium storage. So we've got these two plugs and plugs. Let's put these down here. Let's select my network like this. And then we'll just give it um, a name. So we'll, it's a flux plug, but we'll call it um, storage plug. Huh? The reason you want to name these things, and you've got limits, transfer limits, which is quite handy too. Let's press tab and go to the next one. So now if we look at the network connections, you'll see we've got a flux plug as an input, a storage plug and a gargantium storage like this. And then this one we'll just call a f uh, storage point. I'm not even sure if I need these because they don't look as though they connect. Select a network. And then we should see this one as part of the network con connection by name. Handy. So what we now can do is put these down here like this. Um, so we've got a flux point. So this provides energy to the adjacent blocks. So these are the ones we don't want a flux point because this is coming in. So this is taking energy out of the system. So what we want to do now is to put receives energy from this. So this is the flux plug. So we'll put the flux plug down here. You'll see it connects into all of these four sides here like that. And then we give it a name, um, a network name, which we need as well. And we'll give it a name as well. So we'll say this one, in fact, is the, um, it's actually a pylon plug, isn't it? Spelt this right. So we'll give it the name pylon, pylon plug like this. So this is this one. And this one over here is obviously going to be a point because this is where it's providing network to the plug. Provides network to adjacent blocks, good. Like that. And then we give the same thing here. Let's do the same thing here. Let's give it a sensible, a sort of sensible name anyway. Have I got this right? I haven't, done, if I've messed it up, I've messed it up. Yeah, that provides energy, good. And this receives energy. So in the network, as soon as this gets some power, we can we can start to do that. Now, how am I going to give this power if I can't connect ender gate onto it? Let's just try putting an ender gate on it. If it doesn't work on here, oh, it does work. So now this should be providing power. Uh, let's have a look, see if it is providing any power. Nope, it's not providing any power. Does this work? Has it got any power in it? Let's just check if we've got any power in the network at the moment. Oh, uh, yes, I have. Have I got the wrong one? Do you know, I'm not 100% sure. There, there is, I get confused with these. Let's have a look. That's a pylon point, so that's a flux point. Yeah, that's correct. That is correct. Maybe I've put this on the wrong one. I think I probably have to put it on the plug, don't I? Let's just put it on the plug. Let's see if it's now. Now you're now starting to work, as you can see. So if you, 
energy is going in here and it's coming back in here like this so this network should be getting a little bit of power so let's have a look on this one now um still so it's got 800 so it is charging up but there's no good it's got no power in here at the moment so maybe it's coming out as fast as it's going in that's possible as well of course um actually it's not possible is it let's have a quick look at the networks over here but network connections oh that's wireless so this is taking out and it's putting in 800 all right all right i've messed something up here all right i figure that out i've got a plug on here and i shouldn't have a plug on here <laughs> um, I'm confused. Right, let's remove this bun. Let's remove it from here because I probably... Let's put it on this bun over here. So this is now charging up. Good. So it's charging at a rate of 200 FE per tick. And the transfer limit is caused by this block here. Input? No, it's not. It's probably caused by... This, yes, it's maximum energy here is 200 FE. And you can see it's going down, so it's going to reduce. So that's going down. Is this core going up now? No, it's not. But it will do. When that's when this Gargantian tank is full, which it nearly is, it should then start to transfer power into here. Yeah, good, it is. And the reason we need to do that is to get this up to a big a large amount so that we can actually start the reactor which we're going to build here um i'll be back in a second so the next thing we're going to do is start to build the stuff that we require for the reactor if we've got enough resources left <laughs> as you can see this has gone offline because it hasn't got enough power so what we can do for this we can put down a power flux point provides energy yeah, exactly so you can actually put this on the control. Let's do it at the back side so we don't uh, so we don't need to worry about it. Let's put it down here like this. And then we just have to change, select the network. And then this is this refined storage. You can see everything came back up again. So um, That'll have to do, it's a bit of a long name, it'll be fine. So that's using 585 FE per tick in order to power 886 to power this lot up. Uh, so it's a reasonable amount, not, that's not too bad. So we can let that run through here like this, and it's going to keep this thing alive. Uh, and we can probably go around removing the um, all of these FE connectors and all of these storage connectors there, because they're probably going to be using up stuff. So let's just change this to two i have probably got reason no, i haven't actually got that much stuff but we've probably got enough for what we need to do next i said between episodes i've done some other stuff here i've automated this area a little bit here so what this is to do is to take out of here some lava i'll put the lava into this tank here and the idea is to make the flux um these flux dust so the recipe for this need quite a lot is one bucket of lava for 32 redstone for four of these titanium dusts on the medium heat will produce this flux dust so this is the medium heat here and this is the high heat here to produce the to produce the lava so the recipe to do this is in fact in here because i'm still haven't automated everything properly so here's the here's this one and it requires 32 redstone four titanium and one cobblestone so put the cobblestone into the um, the high temperature, which then produces one bucket of lava, which automatically gets transferred so we can make this up. That's how it's doing that one. Um, other automations we're going to have a look at is now, as we'll have a look at this. This is a fusion crafting core. And what this does, at the moment it's outputting zero. That means it's got no valid recipe. Then the next level is it will output a level of one, which means it has got a valid recipe. And then as soon as it's charging up, then it goes to value two. And when it's actually crafting it, it goes value three. And I'm using an observer block here to actually mon look at this redstone signal here. And what we need to do is to give this fusion and crafting core a pulse. And then underneath here, we have a chest. 
and I've got some ingredients in the chest that I would like to do. So, for instance, we would we've this is for a uh, to make a power pot mark one. This is to make a power pot mark two, and this is to make a power pot mark four. Let's do this one. Uh, let's just sort my inventory out like this. And all I need to do is I've put in here a hopper, and this hopper will provide an item into here. So, for example, in this particular case, we've got one ultimate energy cube. This is the one that doesn't stack, so you have to be careful with that one. So the next one we need is we've got, I need to four spaces because we're going to make one of these. We can do that. Like this. We've got two draconium blocks. It doesn't matter where we put them, of course. So we can put them like this. And then we've got four cast iron blocks. So what I should do is really move, give four spaces out of here and then just do it like this. Or of course, with a hopper, I could put a hopper down here, of course. For. So this, so those are valid, but we haven't got a valid recipe yet. So let's just stand up back up here and put into this a valid recipe. And you'll see what happens as soon as I do it. So I just need to shift click this in, into the core here like this. Actually, I need to press click on it and shift click this into here. And you'll see it's already, it's, this has now gone into mode two. And it's starting to charge up. Probably a bit fast, wasn't it? So we'll leave that. And it will come out in here. Uh, in here, I have got a hopper upgrade. Now, the hopper upgrade is here and it overlaps the um, other display. So let's just turn the other display off by pressing Control and O. And then you can see this. So it's got the different faces here and it tells you what's on the faces. So, for example, facing up is the fusion crafting core. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull items out of that. And then that item will automatically drop down and be placed in here. So this is going to take a bit of time. But while that's taking a little bit of time, because it's only at 21%, let's have a look at this, at the reactor from Deconium Evolution. So let's go back here and have a look at that. We can turn this, we can turn this back on again with Control and O, and have a look at the reactor from Draconium Evolution. Let's just get rid of this and just play reactor. And here are the different components. So this is the reactor core. And the recipe for this, Oops, press that again. I do that quite often, actually. That's one of the irritating things. I forget to press off there. And then you press the recipe on here. So we need four awakened draconium in ingots, two large fragments plus three draconium ingots, and a chaos shard um, for this one. And that makes that. We also need four of these stabilizers. Let's look at the recipe for these. These are made with large chaos fragments, chaotic cores, Chaotic cores are pretty expensive, actually. Uh, awakened draconium and this sta reactor stabilized rotor assembly, which in fact is uh, fairly straightforward. This is reactor stabilized outer rotors, inner rotors, wyvern cores, and some draconium ingots. The recipe for these is three diamonds, a draconium core, and two draconium ingots. Not too bad. And then I think the other one is redstone or something like that. Really. Look at yes, awakened draconium. That's quite expensive then. We've got a reasonable amount of that. So you put that with this one here. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll actually go to the recipe. And then the other bits in here are with this one. The reactor's energy injector. And you need one of those. So again, it's got more of these stabilizer inner rotors, two iron, four deconium ingots, and four of these stabilizers will give us this. And if you go and have a look at this chest again here now, you'll see that was this recipe here. This is the reactor core, and this is the one for the uh, stabilizers. Let's go back over here and actually tell it to craft the stabilizers, and we'll see how much it needs for doing this. So I can actually craft these, for instance. Let's just craft, let's stick it to four, because that's what we need. And you'll see, we need something like 100 um, nether stars. We also need almost 2,000, maybe even more, uh, draconium in order to craft 16 draconium, of course, uh, and chaotic cores. And we need 27 large shards to do this. So that's three, basically the three chaos shards plus one's four chaos shards before you can start doing this. And it's, yeah, it's going to use three. It's already got some available from this one. Or maybe it's just three in that one, in that case. 
So you're going to need a lot in order to do this stuff. Oh, yes, you need the fourth film. Between episodes, I was actually thinking about um, going and doing the Chaotic Dragon again, the Chaos Guardian again, with the Chaotic Armor. And I did, but I didn't record it. And it's so much easier. Instead of taking, I think the first time I did it was about a week as I was learning. The second time I did it was about an hour and a half. So when you know how to do it, it takes around about an hour and a half. I think I said it was four hours last time. And then when you know, uh, when you've got the mm, chaos equipment, then you can basically do it in about 30 minutes or less. Obviously, the stronger, the better. So how's this doing now? 23%. Oh, of course, it's run, run out of power. Let's go and fix that. I must have got some things still running on here. Yeah, let's turn this one to number two. That's good to provide a bit more power. This one also has already been done. And then the third one we need to do is probably the reactor. Oops, I don't want to go back here. Oh, hello. Um, yes. Village is growing a bit, by the way. So let's come over. Oops. Stuck. Let's come over here and change this. Instead of making 800 limit, let's make it uh, 100 and Let's make it 100 limit. Like that. So that it's not going to exceed the capacity of what we've got at the moment. If I take a remove this plug, can't I? I don't need it. You'll notice this one doesn't stack with the others. What you did, in order to get rid of it, just, just craft it to itself and then it removes all the settings uh, like that. So that should be okay now. So we should have some power back into this, into the system. Let's go over here. Turn off the jetpack. And then come back and have a look at this. This should be crafting up a, a little bit faster now. Yes, it is, as you can see. We can check, are these increasing? If these are increasing in power, these don't need it. Then we're, well, then we're on the winning streak. So we didn't, it can't go any faster than that. I did change the cable back here to ultimate universal cable from mechanism because it provides a lot more throughput of power. Um, basically, that was the only reason against the pipes one with the max thing. I thought that was a good idea. Tell you what, I'll be back when this is finished. So as you can see, nearly finished. What I didn't show you was the recipe for this one. So we'll look at the recipe. Uh, we don't actually uh, uh, recipe. I didn't tell you about the energy. Obviously, we've got the same blocks here. These cast iron blocks, zirconium blocks, and the ultimate energy cube. Um, but it requires 768 million op opure Fe. It's a lot. And that's why it's taking a long time. The power part three, which we also didn't really go through, is using um, blocks of mana diamonds, uh, an elite energy core, which is the one the tier below and of course the cast iron ones, and requires mm, half of oh, 512 million OP to do that one. And the power pot too, which we have covered before. Oops, now it's done, it's, it's run, it's finished. And the recipe is done very quickly when it's finished. And then we get this out of here. So we can then take this out of here like this and complete this quest like that. And it completes the power pot que quest. Let's just go and get those quests. And then it's time to go. So let's go back here. These are these are in miscellaneous. So I have done all four of these power pots. Power pot three, which we'll get a random reward for. Uh, animal baby separator, actually quite nice. And this one here is a uh, mana weave robe top, uh, which isn't actually that interesting. Uh, which ones have we not done in here? So we haven't just done any of these. Well, actually, I have done an exchange gadget because that was just done. And a dread lamp. I haven't made a dread lamp. What have we got down here? A compact machines. I'm not going to bother with compact machines at all. Um, the reason for them is they, you can't really interact with them uh, as you used to be able to do. So they've got no redstone interfaces, so you can't pipe materials in and out. And this is a tesseract. Now that is probably interesting to do. And finally, we've got a charging station. What's the recipe for this? Oh. Very cheap. <laughs> Probably could do that just to complete the reward. Um, so it charges things. Early game stuff. I should have done that earlier on, shouldn't I? 
Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next time, we shall be doing the reactor from Draconium Evolution. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.